I, I want to know more about you know your switch from being in the UK to coming back to India. Mm-hmm. And one thing that uh, you know again like the one thing that I would want you to highlight during all of this is I recently read a tweet by you where you said that you were quite gutted about not losing the match but about the conditions that you were being forced to play and where the field was flooded and the ball was hardly moving mm. but the match still went on right yeah. so when you switched from uk to india mm. how did the you know how did the change in infrastructure how did the change in how the sport is carried out how did that affect how you conducted yourself on and off the field um okay so all right so there there are lots of different angles with which i can come to this answer um all right so okay first things first when i decided to go to england um i actually mm-hmm. asked if i could i i mean i spoke to my dad if i could go for one season uh it was oh, always yeah. supposed to be just an experiential thing uh mm-hmm. you know uh and because i knew there wasn't a lot of financial benefit in even if i got selected i knew that i'd have to mm-hmm. work on the side and things like that um So for me it was just the experience I wanted for one season one season became two two became three um <laughs> I I felt I I could grow so much more and I want you know was enjoying my time there was enjoying the challenges um and in fact I, I want to be very honest and clear um with the Spurs team I never actually broke into the first team I remember training with them once because they saw a lot of potential in me um but mm-hmm. I never ended up breaking into the first team because again you know I had to mature so much on the field um yeah. and then uh, i decided to move to fulham in my third year there because like i said my time in england was in my mind limited uh, because i wanted to always come back to india and sort of uh, bring my experience back that was the whole idea um so i decided to switch uh, clubs because i wanted more variety in my experience as well in the limited time that i was there and i heard that fulham was having trials and um i really liked uh, you know the infrastructure and stuff they had as well um so yeah i mean um for me uh i wanted to grow in england i wanted to bring that back to india um but when i came back over here of course you know i had that period which i guess every female footballer has uh, at some point or the other which is uh, like a helpless feeling uh where you you want to play competitions but they just are not enough um and then you obviously end up playing with the boys and the men and things like that so um so i mean you must have picked up from the very beginning uh, since i've been speaking that for me i just want to play right i just want to get yeah. better i want to play um and i think there was a big like period where i was struggling in delhi to just find spots to play to, to in competition i could easily like book a five aside and and train on my own and i used to do that very very often but i mean that that's not really what you play football for right um yeah. so for me it became about um getting to play more and i think that's the biggest difference between my experience in england and india um is that when i played for the 3 years that i did in england i got 30 months of football you know which is you know a match every sunday um training through the week Uh, yeah. So I got thirty months of football in three years, which is probably more than I got collectively all my life until then. You know, so mm-hmm. um, and I think once I came back, that is what I missed. I missed that um, that regularity, that consistency, the the season being ten months long, uh, getting to just look forward every Sunday to a match um, and things like that. And then of course, there's a whole ecosystem around it which is missing, which is obviously. Mm-hmm. infrastructure which is you know um, a regular team to play with that you start building chemistry with and things like that it's all like missing here to a very large extent um yeah. and uh, i think that incident that you spoke about right now the tweet um you know it just sort of highlights that uh, in a very small way um because this was like the national tournament um mm-hmm. you know and there are only two national tournaments that happen for women in india one is the iwl and one is the uh, national uh, the national championship which is interstate competition uh, and this was happening in Ar- arunachal last year um which is known to be like a wet a wet part of the country um yeah. so you know i don't think the weather was unknown or anything like that 
um but the ground was honestly like unplayable like the ball was not moving you know and then they they these like national level girls who are just kicking the ball and looking hideous they look like they have no skill because the ball is not moving you know exactly um, yeah. and that so all you can do is basically chip the ball somewhere pretty much and that's not necessarily what everyone is used to doing you know yeah um and uh, so anyway so i i just tweeted about it because honestly um i think i was more bummed out uh, about the condition than if we lost cuz like i said like even if we won um i would have been bummed out about the condition um and eventually i think the tweet sort of reached a lot of people and i i think they did um look for a few grounds outside the city then so we traveled a little bit and then those grounds were slightly better for sure um so at least it reached people and at least they reacted to it which is great um but i mean that shouldn't have happened in the first place at least at, not at the national level like i understand it there's a local tournament you know yeah um yeah. and then you you there's no other choice but to do it then i understand but this is a national level. there's a lot of preparation that should go into it um and yeah anyway so it is it is definitely a big frustration that perhaps i have in common with a lot of players here in india um and that is obviously uh the fact that there is no regular uh platform to play on there is no regular training with your teams and things like that and teams come together just days and weeks before a tournament um so there is no real chemistry um yeah. and then so basically all you learn about each other is on the field almost yeah and if you've yeah. played like if you've played with them before uh, if they're like your local teammates or what not then of course then it helps uh, but often it's just a mix of players that come together and represent different teams so uh, the chemistry is very hard and whichever team has been playing together longer inevitably wins you know just because that's just the nature of the sport um right. and yeah so it is definitely a big frustration and i think uh, what has what i've realized has helped me and at this point in time i'm pretty happy with the way things are going at least in my life um as far as football is concerned is because um first of all i've moved to bangalore uh, yeah. from delhi um and it was a very conscious decision because when i came back in 2016 i did a small workshop here um and at that time uh people were sort of knocking on my door and they wanted me to collaborate with them uh because i you know i guess the fact that I went and I played for these big clubs made like a lot of news here so people wanted to work with me um so when I did my workshop in 2016 uh quite a few people came to me wanting to sort of collaborate and stuff and it just felt like the right place to be um yeah. so early 2017 I moved to Bangalore um and yeah as of 2 years ago they announced that OCI card <coughs> card holders can now play for the state um yes so <laughs> Yeah so that's how I so ended Karnat- up right now. So you're the captain of Karnataka now right? Yeah correct. So so that's Yeah so that's uh you know so at least there's that now that I can do I can play for the state now um and apart from that uh the football scene here in Bangalore in general is a lot like more active and stronger for both men mm-hmm. and women um mm-hmm. and uh I think I just made the move at the right time and and I'm happy to be here but I remember the first year that I had moved um bangalore started this league for men called the amateur league yeah uh, now it's not, i i think it's pretty popular like it's in delhi also like correct yeah they go spread, up, spread in, across india yeah, now yeah, yeah. yeah they've opened up in delhi as well and i think mumbai if i'm not wrong um mm-hmm. but yeah so at that time like you know it was a men's league and um everything and, and again i played in that league you know um yeah. because i wanted to play and for me like competition is is what i want and um uh at that time how did it feel humiliating all those men on the field <laughs> i just want to know that honestly i don't i don't see the fact that i'm a girl and they are boys as um it just isn't it doesn't sit in my head is is that it just it just feels like once i'm on the field i'm a player among yeah. amongst yeah. like other players um and as long as they are not treating me differently i won't feel different you know what mm. i mean uh yeah. it, it, you just don't think like that once you're actually playing the game um yeah. so yeah i don't think about it like that at all um but yeah <laughs> i mean, must, must must have been fun having like a, like getting a few nutmegs and stuff here and there 
I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely, I think that would be true for any guy also, right? If you not like yeah. another guy, it's like, yeah. you know, um, and like if a guy performs well, I'm sure he'll come off the field feeling very proud and things. So I mean, mm-hmm. I do exactly all those things, regardless of the fact that I'm a girl, you know? I think that, um, that's the nature of an athlete. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so for me, when I moved to Bangalore, uh, I found the amateur league. I got to play in the amateur league. Um you know, uh, and I got to represent the state. Um, and the KSFA, which is Karnataka State Football Association, is uh, fortunately being headed by like a really fantastic uh, person, uh, Satya Sir, who, you know, has involved me also a lot. Um, and he's very passionate about women's football. So they are constantly looking to do things and tournaments and stuff for women as well. So one way or another, my calendar looks quite full, actually. Uh, whether I'm playing with the guys or playing with the girls and stuff, there's a lot of activity happening for me. And so I'm happy in that sense. Um, uh, yeah. But, you know, there are obviously, um, there are obviously those moments um, where there is a little bit of frustration because of lack of tournaments or that you have to go out and really convince girls to play and be more regular and things like that, which didn't have to, you didn't have to put up that much hard work in England because it was already all set up. And there were already so many girls who were willing to train and, you know, uh, work and play and everything. Whereas I think uh, those things, it just takes a lot of back end work over here uh, for each player. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's what it is. And that's something that honestly I'm willing to do uh, because I've had that career trajectory now where I I mean, I, I think just naturally I've come to that point where instead of being like a, young player now I'm one of the older ones and if I don't sort of set the example and set the tone um, I can't expect the other girls to uh, you know sort of also be as serious about the sport as I am because if they see me then I want them to be like shit man she's training so hard and stuff I better keep up you know Um, Mm. so I think that's that's what it is and I think like I said I've been quite fortunate that things around me have sort of shaped up pretty well and I'm in Bangalore at the right time and KSF is putting a lot of effort into women's football. In fact, this morning I had a meeting. Remember I told you that I may not be able to get on this call because we had a meeting? Yeah. That was yeah, meeting. Yeah. So we had like a meeting about women's football and like the, the next steps once Corona sort of uh, is out of the way. So yeah, like there's mm-hmm. a lot of, uh, you know, there is a lot of hope and um, the, I mean one way or another, whether I'm doing individual training or whatever, my week, my year is quite full with activity. And then, of course, there is Sisters in Sweat as well, which is my work, uh, keeps me busy, keeps me happy as well. Yeah, yeah so I, I think that's the perfect segue for my next question, which is basically, yeah. you, you you talked about collaborations. So yeah. firstly, what I really want to know about is, how does it feel to be a Nike athlete? So, um, okay, so again, when I came back in 2016, um, do you remember the Daradin campaign that happened for women? Uh, the Nike Daradin campaign. It was huge back in 2016. What what was it about? Sorry. Uh, I mean, it was a huge campaign with all these uh, female athletes. Even Deepika Padukone was a part of it, and all these. Uh, there was at least ten of us, ten athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, this was in 2016, so you can Google it. It was like a huge campaign at that time here in India. Uh, it was actually groundbreaking. Um, and there are all these female athletes that were featured in it. Um, and, uh, okay, I'll just sing it a bit. I'm not a good singer, but I'll sing it a bit. Maybe you'll remember. Um, <laughs> yes, let, let's do this. <laughs> no, so it, it, it basically played at all the gyms and, and everything for like a good month because it, it just was like such a great tune. Okay, I'm going to try, okay? Um, you know, I can't. I cannot. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> So it went something like da da ding da da ding da ding da da ding da da ding da ding. Do you remember this at all? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I remember it. It was I. The picture that I that comes in my mind is you know around sixteen, seventeen athletes just Correct. standing yeah. on a pitch. Yeah, right. And the pickup article in the middle of it, if I remember correctly, like yes, right yes. bang in the center. That's the campaign. Yeah, it went yeah, viral. Yeah, yeah, it went viral in India as well as like around the world, and it was like so well done. Um. So when I come back in 2016, how this happened was um, a couple of my friends uh, were working on this project um, and they just asked me to send in a video 
uh, just sort of introducing myself and maybe taking like a uh, like a couple of minutes of me just playing and stuff um, yeah, and just sort of playing it. Um, and, and you know they didn't tell me for what brand for what purpose really, they just told me just send it in uh, you know there's this campaign we're doing and uh, we're looking for some background athletes or something so I thought okay fine cool you know why not so I, I put it together I sent it across um, and you know Nike sort of loved my story and um, they liked the fact that there's this Delhi girl who went all the way to London to play and stuff and um, they actually gave me a more prominent role um, so Amongst the 10 athletes that they had shortlisted for this campaign, uh, all from different sports. So we had cricketers, we had like all these national level athletes. Um, so, you know, I was one amongst them. And it was, um, I don't think any of us at the time of shooting knew that this campaign included so many other athletes and, and was so much larger than we thought. Um, and then finally, when it came out, we realized like the, the scope of this and everything. Um, and at that point, once they sort of liked me and I became a part of that campaign and everything is when I signed for Nike. Um, and I signed with them for a year. Uh, so it was a one year con like one year contract and everything. And, you know, uh, they basically would send across um, the latest merchandise uh, and things like that. And... Yeah, obviously there was a commercial aspect to it as well. Um, but once that one year finished, um, and this is why I think I will always be a Nike loyalist. <laughs> it's because um, <laughs> it's because they actually they actually you know like I think I've experienced this in my uh, time as a player. A lot of brands, mm. whether it be a sport brand or like any other brand, a lot of the times yeah. when they call you on, and unless you're like someone like huge in sports like let's say like a Neymar or a Messi or whatever um, a lot mm-hmm. of the times the brands sort of uh, treat you like they are doing you a favor whereas, yeah, yeah. whereas, um, yeah. whereas Nike behaved the exact opposite no matter how little of an athlete you were even if you're a state level athlete everyone gets treated so well at the Nike office like you know there's some huge stars um, mm-hmm. and I think that's the best like that actually sort of is the fiber of Nike, you know? And yeah, I yeah. I really, really respected that. So even after that one-year contract um, finished, uh, I've maintained mm. a relationship with Nike in the sense that I only try and wear, like, their boots and things like that. Um, and I only try and sort of, you know, if I'm doing any photo shoot, I only try and wear their The gear stuff. should be yeah, Nike, correct. yeah. Um, yeah. And even though it's not contracted anymore, like if at any point I drop them a message and say, hey, there's a tournament coming up, my boot is coming apart, could you just send me a new pair? You know, they'll actually oblige, mm. you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I'm not a very demanding person. I don't, it's like once in six months, I might send them a message and say, hey, <laughs> I need some merch, could you send something across? And they'll, they'll do it, you know? Um, so for me, like that's sort of been my relationship with Nike. And I, I've become like a huge fan of the brand just for, uh, the way that they think and the way that they respect athletes anyways um, and yeah I don't know if that is what people or other girls really look up to uh, it definitely it definitely puts <laughs> I look up to that <laughs> I look up to that so who should, doesn't look you, up to a Nike athlete you have to have to then check out their campaign it's called the Dada Din yeah. campaign okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I'm so telling big. you like one second yeah, I have to tell you yeah. before before you see this on the internet I'm going to clip up you singing that song and put it on the internet oh, <laughs> because that's one of the one of the best things that has happened today oh. also other than other than that I mm. think um, we've given Nike a good seven minutes of free huh. free publicity <laughs> so Nike please send all three of us checks of a lot of money because you've got a lot of time on our podcast i mean mm, boots will work too boots yeah. are fine as well yeah and and i think other than that i think sisters in sweat is what all of us were like like both of us were completely amazed by so yeah. could you tell us a little bit more about sisters in sweat and how it came along right so um like i said to you when i when i came to bangalore for like a short workshop in 2016, uh, a few people sort of knocked at my door to collaborate with me. Uh, and that's why I sort of decided to move to Bangalore because I could foresee like football just like this is like the hub of football right now yeah, in my yeah. mind. Um, mm-hmm. I could just see like a lot of activity happening. And that's why I made the move. Um, yeah. And I already had uh, not actually already, but after I moved to Bangalore is when a couple of jobs sort of actually came um, into fruition. 
Um, and one of them was, uh, okay, this is a little bit off the exact question, but I'll get to that. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so basically, uh, I had a couple of jobs that cropped up as I moved to Bangalore, like after. Um, and Sisters in Sweats certainly was not something that I went out looking to do or anything. Um, but at the end of 2017, so in fact, one of the athletes in the Daradin campaign, her name is Shweta Subaya. Um, I hmm. met her through the Nike campaign. She's, she's a Nike certified trainer. Um, and she was my contact in Bangalore. She lives in Bangalore. Um, and so when I moved here, she was like my person to go to. Um, and she introduced me at the end of 2017 to one of her friends. Um, and basically, I am not a very social person. I don't really like big crowds and I don't like going out for parties and stuff. I'd rather stay home. That's just who I am. Um, so this was one of those evenings when Shweta finally convinced me to actually get out. Um, and so I did. And she introduced me to her friend Shunali. Um, and she introduced me as a footballer. So Shunali like instantly like grew curious and, and was just like, hey, why don't you train me and like a few of my friends? Um, yeah. And Shunali was already a few drinks down, huh? So we don't know, we don't know how, to, <laughs> like, how seriously to take her. But uh, anyways, uh, Shweta and I, like we booked a five-a-side ground anyways that weekend. Um, and we sort of, you know, we're just waiting for the women to turn up. And we just thought maybe three, four girls will turn up whatever. It'll be good fun. And that's it. And like to our surprise, like 17 women turned up for that first session. Um, and it was just awesome. Like, you know, they turned up first of all in like bandanas and tights and all everything, which is not very football -y, but uh, but like athletic gear, you know, it was really cute and it was just yeah. such good energy. Um, and so Shweta and I did a one and a half hour session. First half an hour, Shweta sort of handled their warm up and everything, got them ready for the sport. Um, and then the next hour, I sort of, uh, you know, got them introduced to the game and uh, we did some drills and we ended with, of course, a small match or whatever. Um, so yeah. that's basically the format we had that first session. And it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. the, women, the women loved it. And they actually came back to us and said that, why don't you have this session every Sunday? So ever since yeah. the end of 2017, we've been doing that. And that sort of is what we now call Sisters in Sweat because that community of like 17 women has now become 400 women. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. And it's it's grown completely organically. We, we have not pumped in any money into our marketing or anything. It's just word of mouth. Um, mm. And uh, it was, you know, the beginning of this year that finally Shweta and I incorporated Sisters in Sweat into an actual company. Uh, so up until yeah. that point, we were just doing it purely out of fashion. We weren't even like taking a lot of money from the women. Uh, we just wanted to cover ground rent and stuff. And then obviously we saw the potential um, and then, you know, we incorporated it. And then, of course, COVID struck. Um, and, mm. then, uh, you know, strangely enough, this period has actually worked to our, to our advantage because uh, while our main offering was these physical football sessions, um, we were being limited by just Bangalore women who could come and do these sessions. Whereas COVID sort of forced us to go online. And once we went online and got creative with the kind of offerings we could have, um, mm. online, we actually got to reach a lot more people. And, you know, we have like people around India now who are part of the community. So when I say 400, yeah. I mean 400 women on our website now uh, who are from like across the country and a few from outside the country as well. You know, so, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, now we're on Mondays, we're doing Pilates online. On Wednesdays, Shweta handles her HIIT. On Fridays, I do football online. And on Sundays, there's dance, you know. Um, yeah. And now, this week, actually, this coming week, we are res like restarting our physical football sessions. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and I think if, if not people, not many people know about this, you're actually like a pretty good dancer like i've seen your videos on instagram dancing and they're, and they're pretty great like that, that was the strangest segue ever but yeah <laughs> uh, i mean I, I can dance but again i'm not like a, a social dancer and i'm not like i again i can't follow steps very well because i've never been like choreographed before and things like that it's just me just doing whatever my body is like wanting to do <laughs> that's it um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and think like this is a very you know 
comprehensive interview mm. in the sense that we started from when you were seven and seven or eight yeah. and now we've come to what you're doing right now yeah and i think you know that we've actually managed to cover a whole lot something that we didn't even think that we could do with this podcast but i'm so glad that we were able to do it yeah. so i just have you know one question that mm-hmm. i would want to ask as a concluding question yeah and this again comes from you know things that i've read about you your interviews mm-hmm. with one line which struck out to me was you mentioned in an interview that you would want to be the role model that you never had yeah so if you could tell us who that role model is and you know what the legacy of that role model should be in the coming say 10 15 20 years down the line then what would that be? um i think just to be able to work hard enough so that you can open up opportunities for the people who come um because mm-hmm. i know how hard i've worked to sort of have the opportunity yeah right yeah uh, and i hope that that hard work sort of reduces and there's more on field um opportunities for you know the 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 girls and boys that come um because like i said like at least over here um there's so much back end work that you have to do just to hmm. put on a competition or just to put down uh players on the field you know uh there's so much convincing this like they need to find ground and everything so i just hope the uh yeah. ground work reduces and uh for like the people it's know. more about playing right instead yeah. of yeah. organizing everything yeah, for like, us yeah the athlete, actually... the athlete should get to focus on their job as an athlete you know yeah That's yeah it. um and i think that would and, and the more and more we get closer to that i think you know i'll be happy i'll know that i've done my job or whatever you know so how how would you want to be individually remembered as uh i i don't know i think i think that would pretty much be it right i just want to i hope someone that, who helped the community grow, sorry yeah someone who helped the community grow like the athletes grow and stuff exactly someone who opened up opportunities perhaps um uh so so i think I, like like you said right in a previous interview i said that i i didn't particularly have a role model growing up like that hmm. um so i hope that i can fill up those shoes and i hope that it inspires like another tanvi or another you know whoever at the age of 6 7 to sort of uh take up the sport and actually have opportunities through the journey you know yeah. uh definitely yeah. more than i had and i think mm. if that ends up happening i i'll be quite happy um and yeah you know there's this uh, i just put out this quote i think yesterday or two days ago uh on my prikrama team group um and it's a quote by will smith actually you know uh he said that um you know you don't you don't go out saying that i'm going to build the biggest baddest um uh grandest wall there ever was you know mm-hmm. you don't start there you you say that i'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid and slowly you have a wall you know that's your so, yeah. so for me i just hope that you know i'm able to lay like a perfect brick or two or whatever so that eventually like me along with many other people of course that there is a, a wall eventually and you know one that supports you one that makes you feel empowered that gives you like everything that you deserve um hmm. so yeah that's that's what it's that's how i see it at least great i think that's a perfect conclusion to this podcast thank you so much sanvi we were really no, thank thankful thank you so much thank no you for joining us sanvi thank you for this guys thank you so much also guys if you want to know any more from us you can message us on instagram if you if you want to talk to tanvi good luck <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we 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 really happy to have recorded this podcast i can't thank you enough because this is such a fanboy moment for me and for jay as well also um, guys if if uh, you don't know we uh, jay and i along with another friend of ours we have another page on instagram called pilotalk underscore sports where we talk about football basketball all kinds of sports you can check that out as well and we'll be coming up with new episodes very soon thank you so much thank you tanvi thank you guys thank you guys thank you so much for thank being here with us no problem enjoy the rest of your sunday